What's going everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch with a few days to have played on the new patch. Pretty confident on how I feel about it. So in today's video, we're going to try to give you guys some tips on how this might affect either your Rhine gameplay, how you interact with your team's Reinhardt and the enemies, and then one step further, why the top level players still probably won't be playing much Reinhardt due to the understanding gap of how Overwatch is played at the highest levels. And we'll try to give you some really key tactics in how to exploit Reinhardt's weaknesses that prevent him from being a dominant top tier pick. But because he requires quite a bit of game sense to outplay good Reinhardt play, Ryan definitely does now have the stats to make some serious offensive plays. And if you've been watching the channel recently, we've been discussing that as the entire balance state of the game has been changing over the last year, they've really tried to turn away from inherent defense to instead promote all the roles basically to be more playmaker with offense, diminishing the power of just holding your position. The negative downsides of that effect is that traditional main tank started to just become kind of useless because Sigma or Roadhog could roam around the map one shot killing things. And the thing that I noted in that balanced state, if a main tank like Reinhardt or Winston even now tries to go in to make space, it really requires like your Ana to step up in aggressively and hit an aggressive nade you cannot simply just sit behind your tank heal him and hope you will win the fight like someone has to be actively going in to make a play on your space otherwise you might as well have been playing a fragging tank well now the buffs to reinhardt kind of cheat that logic where and i hope you'll see this in some of the gameplay in the background the previous version of ryan with just a little less health and a little less damage, it was difficult as fights would break out and get exchanged if you lost a teammate to have any meaningful impact. Because there were so many things around you that were a threat to you, requiring you to play a bit more defensive and not really having the kill potential of some of the other tanks or really anything in the game. Whereas now, your hammer damage is so severe that there's almost nothing that can save from it. With a little asterisk there, there's some things that can save from it. Talk about that at the end of the video. But for the most part, if you outposition the enemy, and get in swinging range of them, you can carve up entire enemy teams. 85 damage per swing is massive. Remember, Dragon Blade does 120. A single damage boost on your new hammer swings does 110. So when you're starting applying nano boosts or mercy beams or anything to this hammer, once you're deep in the fight, you are as much as a threat as the Sigmas and Roadhogs of the world. So a few Reinhardt based tips for you to consider with this being the case, Interestingly enough, I think Ryan's pin is less required for kills now. Sometimes you will need that pin to deny things running at you or punish positioning, get an insta-kill. But a lot of the times, just swinging the hammer and holding a great position will work because you do have the damage to pressure things back and build up to an earth shatter. Now, the interesting that happens as well is that this damage scares enemy tanks more than it used to because it starts to rack up when you start getting multiple swings. So a thing that I've noticed especially in the Reinhardt mirror, the Rhein that gets to swing snowballs an advantage quicker than before. Whereas previously at 500 health, it sort of felt if you won the pin battle, your team would be able to shoot that Reinhardt and burst him and he'd insta die. Whereas now I feel if you pin a 550 HP Rhine, it's going to be harder to do that. And he may even in fact have the durability to survive and get healed back up. So be careful pushing the Rhine into his formation and instead try to concentrate on on your hammer swings either protecting a corner so they can't come in or going aggressive on the enemy's back line because you just straight up burst things down when you get there. You are much more in threat to be bullied by the enemy Rhine if he goes aggressive on you. And if you don't start landing damage somewhere to cause pressure and play too defensive and inactive, the enemy Rhine will run you over, which is pretty cool. Those old guides really hold up and mean even more now as the incentives for you to go aggressive and make plays has just been turned up again. Now. You'll damage tanks more, no matter who they are, basically. But I can't stress enough the kill potential you now have on squishies. Because with two swings of the hammer dealing 170 and a fire strike doing 100, in the space of time that you burst that damage out, there's nearly nothing that can stop you killing a squishy. Again, asterisk. Because <laughs> there is something. But most of the characters in the game just fall over. Keeping in mind that there is the cool Reinhardt tech that a single swing can only hit once, but if you try to land the swing at the end of the first one, so that 
that when it wraps back around on the backswing, both swings can almost hit at the same time, giving your opponent very little time to react, dealing that swing damage almost in a full burst. Now, we spent the first part talking about Ryan because I think it was the most impactful change, but I only think it really impacts the majority of players in the middle ranks which you might say, well, that's a great thing. But at the same time, we're kind of expecting Blizzard to balance for players that know what they're doing rather than just throwing stats at things in order to force a result, even with players that don't know what they're doing. That's the fundamental flaw of mass appeal balancing is that, well, once you learn certain tricks, like the ones I'm going to go to explain why poke is still far superior in the metagame, well, it's sort of a dichotomy on off switch that the stats and buffs to Ryan or the nerfs to Bap don't really matter because it's not what they needed in order to compete in the metagame at high levels. And you certainly can use some of these tactics once you start to get to know them. In short, Reinhardt, if he can get in on the right targets, swing to win, big frags, he really does play like a battering ram now. And as long as your team is aggressive with you and is also looking to find exploitable targets and frag out, well, then you will see his value. But to play that way requires taking risks. And the truth is there's strong things in the meta that can play with low risks while still providing a lot of value. These tactics that I'm gonna go through are pretty universally understood at Grand Master, but I think they need not to be. Every single one of you can employ the lessons that punish the Reinhardt gameplay you've seen me destroy enemies with this entire time. This enemy Sigma on Route 66 is consistently contesting me on the cart, on a payload map. This is just fundamentally the wrong way to play the character and to play poke versus brawl. And the new Rhine, with his incredible stats, punishes that mistake harder than before but Grand Masters players aren't even making that mistake, which is what makes this most recent balance patch to buff up Ryan and try to nerf down Lamp ineffective altogether. It misses the point of the playstyle differences. First of all, let's start off looking at the most poke dominant map in the entire pool. So much so that you might say Widowmaker can hard carry this map of Havana. One major reason is that the payload takes an extremely long time to get to the checkpoint. Checkpoints in Overwatch are the only objectives that actually matter because they're the ones that flip the respawns. So as a defending team in this position, we don't have to care about the payload at all until it's about to hit the checkpoint because if we win the fight by the time it gets close to it all of their members are going to have a massive long respawn way back we will keep map keep our crossfire and any pursuit to the cart will just rain into a crossfire of death and they'll just never get it around the corner to the checkpoint drain tons of time and we'll be at a massive advantage that's how high level players play it now, in contrast, let's look at what these Masters teammates, which is top 3%, really they should know better, but they don't, which means if you're at any rank, essentially, you probably are doing this wrong. The way you beat this Brawl Comp riding the cart is to surround it. So if you look at the angles that our Widowmaker, Sigma, and Roadhog are taking, we're able to get around the Rhine Shield, not focus it, shoot it when it's all we can see, but largely using positions where we're trying to shoot things past the Rhine Shield. Brawl characters like Brigida and Reinhardt are incredibly weak to getting surrounded and incredibly strong if you funnel down the center lane and position like I see every plat player basically do so where our supports in this situation are playing as if not only that they have a tank in front of them but focusing the front line is the way we're going to win now targeting an overwatch is quite complicated but especially because they have a brig and we have may widowmaker we're far more likely to struggle focusing the front line as they have a shield bubbles brig to protect them and ananades to heal them that it would be far more efficient if we just played a longer angle and surrounded them I don't mean to overly reiterate this point about supports because ironically enough, this is the same exact map that I covered in my DPS support playstyle video, which I try to go at length to describe supports in Overwatch right now, unless you are an actual defensive enabled healer, which we'll get to those, most of them need to be looking for aggressive opportunities. And if you're playing Ana or Zen, 
your best abilities are anti-nade and discord. So if all you can see is the enemy Rhine shield, you've messed up really bad, especially when there's this free high ground lane over the top to just get infinite free kills. If we ignore the front line entirely and walk our Ana to the high ground and throw an easy nade into the back, we win the entire fight for free. But if you don't know that that's your job as support, well, then we're going to focus the front line in a matchup. We just can't win. The cart's going to roll and fingers get pointed but really it's like the knowledge gap that ruins this. I do eventually go to Reinhardt, like my team is playing like we need, but it doesn't help. I'll show you that later, but in the very next fight on streets phase, you can just see our entire team drop what responsibilities actually matter on this next phase of the fight. Again, same exact situation. Havana payload has like a hundred miles to get to the checkpoint when we actually have to get nervous about the objective. Before that point, I want you to try to pay attention to how much value the Reinhardt and Zarya aren't getting. If you have high ground above them, there is no excuse to ever give them a target to shoot at. In an Overwatch, the matchup can be described pretty simply as if multiple members of the enemy team can't fight you and you can fight, your overall team formation is going to destroy theirs. Unless, of course, we give the Brawl characters value by using our Maywall on the Zarya, focusing the tanks, and giving their durability something to do. Because of our incorrect decision-making here, we go from easily winning this fight into most definitely losing it due to our reluctance to cover key positions on the map. Luckily, we are able to eliminate the ash that goes up the right-hand flank, but our May focusing on the tanks, again, don't matter for like the next minute, completely frees up the left-hand flank up the staircase. And because we think the objective matters now when it doesn't, well, the McCree is going to be able to play this position and get two kills in a situation where he is 1v3, <laughs> right? Like just looking at the tanks is the mistake here like I don't know how else to describe it all the Rhine buffs in the world don't make him have a leap ability that gets him to the high ground but if we think they're a priority and look at them instead of look the other direction and surround them well then they look like they're the best characters in the game so this is how the mainstream Overwatch player base can get fooled into thinking Reinhardt is more meta than he is because you give him value by focusing the enemy's Rhine and expecting your team to have a Rhine to play with it but really as long as we surround this cart eliminate eliminate the squishies, hold our positions and don't give them up for free to a flashbang McCree solo flank. Well, we can hold this streets phase for five minutes until their tanks come up to contest us. Players tunnel vision on the wrong targeting and it ends up throwing the whole fight. We still could have even end up winning this, but our McCree makes a mistake of giving the Zarya finally something to shoot at. Now he's on the low ground fighting a Zarya where we still don't care about the cart. If we just stand up top and keep rotating around the defenses and shoot down on them, Poke wins this easily. And while I explain this next bit, we'll look at an example of when I'm on Ryan and my support still don't take an active role in playmaking, so it really doesn't matter what tank I am. If your squishies play a squishy dominated map incorrectly, you're just kind of just gonna lose, to be honest. Point is, so many Overwatch maps can be played this way. And I know I've been promising you guys a lot of videos, only can make one at a time, unfortunately, but I have a lot down the pipeline. Another one is going to be about spacing, which a lot of players in Overwatch struggle with and maybe not even know that it is like 50% of your Overwatch skill. In short, spacing is the skill set of dynamically repositioning to better set up your abilities and avoid the enemies. And if you're playing against the Reinhardt, being outside of range of Earth Shatter and his swings means he doesn't contribute. I mean, he has shield, but it eventually whittles down and he's not a threat in that time, right? But if you jump into the line of fire of Zarya or Reinhardt, instantly they have been given something to do. GM level players don't make these mistakes and simply always position in the right area. This is also the reason why so many characters characters in Overwatch have widely different power levels based on whether you're GM or an average level player. D.Va, Sombra, Brigida all use this spacing technique to maximize their value. And if your ability to reposition to find the correct play and where you should be isn't good enough, well, you're going to feel like the characters just don't have the stats to compete. But 
a lot of times these characters are dominant meta picks, but they require quite a barrier of entry oftentimes in order to get them to work on Overwatch maps. Now, I think because so many of your enemies are going to be making the types of mistakes that gift Rind value, as I know from losing SR, then gaining a bunch in this season, playing a lot of Reinhardt at a 70% win rate, players just gift you Reinhardt value outside of like masters. But that's when the BAP and Brig characters come out that are really the linchpin that is going to slow down any engagement style of play at the higher tier meta. And the reason is, even though Batiste Immortality Field can be destroyed sooner, it still saves a life basically instantly. And I really think Blizzard missed the mark on this entire patch, sort of missing the point why any of this is strong or isn't strong. And I thought Flats, in his recent review of the Giga Rind patch, did a great job explaining this, so I'll borrow some of his explanations, but Batiste's immortality field on a cooldown that you can put safely out of line of sight is oftentimes better than sound barrier, like one-to-one. -one. On top of that, you have to do way more to gurn up to sound barrier. So I think moving forward, if Batiste is going to have effectively two ultimates, they either need to dramatically change the cooldown on Lamp, because right now I would say it functions similar to the power level of like Zarya's 132 experiment bubble, where it can save your whole team. And that's an, an incredible amount of swing potential, defensively speaking. There's like nothing in the game that equals that. And for the most part, if Bap and Brig aren't in the game, then movement and engagement and all those skills definitely can dominate. But as soon as players start playing more intelligently and play around the defenses of Batiste, and then propping it up with Brig, well, then you create this unrushable, undiveable type backline that has multiple extra line. It makes for severe swing potential in the exchange of resources. You have to do so much just to get in on them. Then they can lamp to save the Brigida, which then continues Inspire, building up to Rally, and Rally is the best support ult in the game. Brig is weak when she's caught out of position and can be overwhelmed, but Bap covers her weakness there, and Bap's weakness is getting crowd control controlled and disrupted, but if you have the best CC character by your side, Brigida, you don't have that weakness. This gets a little bit irritating for content creators because I literally said all of this before the patch. This was no mystery to anybody that knew a thing or two about the game. I'm not some prodigy of Overwatch. I just know the basics. This type of patch and the direction they've gone has like seemingly no effect to move us back towards the greatest Overwatch patch we've ever seen that seems to have lasted like a month and then they just couldn't help themselves but put in tons of free value characters that lets you play this keep away style and i think that just should never be powerful in overwatch defenses are fine but you should have to be able to set them up and it be costly to do so not feel just simply better than taking the risk of engaging mostly comes down to the power of Batiste Lamp, in my opinion, where because you don't have to earn it, you don't have to engage in order to work up towards it, and there's not really a way to track it, because it's on a short enough cooldown that it likely will be up again by the time you need it, and you don't have to have done anything in the middle transition fights or regrouping phases, like say a Lucio would need to, in order to take advantage of it. If Lamp was also an ultimate, or at least worked on an ultimate system where you have have to earn the little circle by contributing to the team, well, then Bap would have to have a more active role. But he and Brig can more or less just hide around corners and force you to come into them, gaining a lot of value. And whether or not this is a problem for you probably comes down to how well those players position and how well they peel and cover for each other when someone is going aggressive. I think at a lot of ranks, I see characters like Wrecking Ball or Doomfist just utterly have their way with the entire enemy team. When it's high tier Brigida play that often can just solo counter it if done correctly. And on this channel, we can take efforts to train up the community the best we can to try to emulate those GM tactics that dominate when you know them. But also to some degree, I think we should be asking ourselves the question, what play style is Overwatch even attempting to create? Are we playing an RPG game where you pick the best gear and don't need much mechanics to beat the boss? Or are we playing a FPS MOBA hybrid where your spacing, movement, map control, and teamwork should matter? We had a metal 
like that, but for some reason, Blizzard was boundly determined to try to remove that skill from the game again. I don't know why they did this. I can't give you a good reason, but it's my hope anyway that Overwatch 2 doesn't play this way at high levels. Thankfully, players aren't good enough yet at exploiting this, that this may not be a problem for most players out there. But I'm a little bit afraid that if I make a spacing guide and all of a sudden everybody knows how to reposition in fights, do some of these highly obnoxious characters all of a sudden get a big boost in performance and more players are subjected to the wrath of what these free value heroes can get. Please, Jeff, save us with Overwatch 2. Now, a reasonable question to ask in this big interaction is, where does Lucio fall in all of this? Because in theory, because Rhine utterly runs over Brigida now, if you speed Reinhardt in, surely he'd be able to overwhelm them. The problem is Lucio is a much more fair Overwatch character where he has to have decisions and trade-offs with what he adds. Brigida and Bap don't mind too much you rushing in on them because the combination of them covers for each other's weaknesses while just simply having more stats and being just better fighters. Bap's damage, Brig's combos, their ultimates and everything just stack up better to Lucio. He's really only got speed. So you can win that positioning game, but that realistically only converts on some fights. You catch them out, run them over. Okay, you won a team fight, but the question is, can you win enough team fights over the entire map? And that's gonna be pretty hard to do once you start fighting into rally or they kite you effectively, get crossfire angles, surround you. Lucio looks to really struggle up against that DLC super poke playstyle. This is why high level players are still pretty upset with Blizzard dropping the ball with this patch because they're seemingly attacking it from the exact wrong type of angle. You can't simply make characters stronger that do all of the things without trade-offs. If they can play this keep away style, it needs to not be better than the risks and skill it takes to enact your spacing, playmaking, teamwork style. And although I love being able to just run things over as Reinhardt, like a choo-choo train, especially with the new skin that actually has a choo-choo sound effect when you pin, I feel it is the same mistakes I was so happy to see them stop making a couple months ago. We're just back on the same short-term thinking train that I don't know where this leads. Luckily, with Overwatch 2, a lot of these decisions may have already been made and we might have a whole host of separate problems around the corner for us to address. They've said many times that tanking might change its personality and be more about eliminations. The role has shifted that way with this new Rhine change. Maybe that's the direction we can expect Overwatch 2 to have, but I hope the rest of the game goes about making plays on maps, which I would say 90% of the game plays that way until you start picking the anti-fun heroes that can just hide and stall out the engagement. That's the issue with it, right? Like if you look to any comp that people hate playing against, whether it was double shield when the shields were insane, whether it's goats that had AOA healing and protection for days, I feel like you can point to every bad meta that wasn't respected for its skill and look to the core of it being RPG stats lasting longer because their gear is just better. Whereas when fighting for map control is difficult and has costs and benefits, those are the metas that are more respected and actually display Overwatch skill. It's almost like you're casting an ability that makes you immune from playing the game. And I just don't think that's what they should be aiming for. Well, guys, that's everything for today's video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please be sure to leave it a like. It really does help us out. Let's know that you're enjoying the content. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe. I'm sure at the bell icon to actually get notified when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter. Where we tweet out news, updates, and dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito. For your Overwatch, we'll see you guys next time.